Hello everybody, my name is Jeff Heath. Welcome to the Vintage Workshop. Uh, this session is going to be hopefully an ongoing session. I don't know how frequently I'm going to do it, but uh, the reason why I call it morning coffee is because uh, if I'm doing this right, uh, this is going to appear on Sunday morning. And morning coffee is a family tradition in my house. Uh, every morning I'm the first guy up uh, by a long ways and I come downstairs, I make a pot of coffee. And then when my wife comes downstairs, we go ahead and uh, share coffee in the morning before we both get our day started. We talk about all those important things and quite a few things that really aren't so important either. So uh, basically what I want to do is uh, have a sit down session with you and very quickly just show you and tell you what's going on in the shop, uh, discuss what we've been doing, uh, possibly discuss any comments or questions you guys might have, and uh, on top of that, talk about what's coming up next. So, we've already finished the video for the very quick get her running kind of uh, update on the Walker Turner 16 inch bandsaw, and that's really, really turned out to be just a great saw. I had no idea when I bought it uh, what I was actually getting. I, I know about them, but uh, had never had one before, and I'm really impressed. That thing is really a nice saw. Uh, it's more powerful than I thought it would be with a three-quarter horsepower motor for resawing and uh, cuts really nice and straight. I'm just I'm just real pleased with it. So I've been using it almost every day uh, this week since uh, getting it all done. So that turned out great. That's not a restoration though. And uh, I do a lot of restorations on a lot of the old machines. I prefer, as I'm sure you can kind of tell uh, by the way things are in the shop, I really do prefer having the old industrial quality woodworking machines. I've been a woodworker for, uh, boy, 30-some years now, but uh, as a business for about the last 22, 23 years. And initially, I had some of the newer stuff that is available when you go into you know one of your local uh, woodworking stores. And I uh, had all kinds of problems with a lot of stuff not holding tolerances and uh, finding out later that I had a warped table on a joiner and, you know, stuff like that. And I was introduced to my first vintage machine and uh, it's it's been a quest of mine ever since to basically swap out all the machines that I owned that were new machines for all old vintage machines and I've done a, a reasonably good job of it and then some. There are quite a few categories where I have uh, you know two, three, four just because when I get an opportunity to get one uh, I don't pass it up. A lot of these machines are available very inexpensively so uh, it doesn't take a lot of a big investment on my part to uh, go ahead and save them from the scrapper and uh, basically put them in line and eventually get to them. And uh, that's what's going to bring us to what I want to talk to you about next and that is what are we going to do next? The very next machine that we're going to be restoring is this one and I'm going to go ahead and take you over there and show it to you right now. Alright, this is my Oliver 159A pattern maker's lathe and uh, this is a woodworking lathe, not a metalworking lathe. And the reason why it's called a pattern maker's lathe is because like a woodworking lathe, it has a saddle and a cross slide compound for basically traversing up and down. There's a rack underneath the bed here and you crank the handle just like you would with a metalworking lathe and it, and it goes back and forth. And you can put tooling in there. You can see I've got a tool post in there. Uh, there's tool holders like the old Armstrong tool holders. Uh, and what these were used by mostly was in pattern making shops for creating patterns uh, that were going to end up being cast at a foundry. Uh, I'm certainly not a historian on them, but uh, that seems to be from what I've learned and what I've read uh, the number one use as to why anybody would buy uh, a lathe like this. Uh, they're outstanding lathes, but they're considered spindle lathes. What I mean by that is uh, they're, they're made for turning long skinny objects and I want to do that because I've got quite a few old vintage chisels uh, that I've purchased at flea markets and garage sales and at Arnfest swap meet uh, stuff like that and I want to make new handles for them but I also want to turn bowls this has a 12 inch swing uh, on the spindle and uh, that's a nice medium sized bowl and uh, I definitely want to uh, have it to be able to do that if you look on this dial here this is the Reeves dial control and uh, basically this lathe starts out at uh, between 8 and 900 RPMs and goes all the way up to I believe 3000 RPMs. That's really fast 
for a bowl. That's a good speed for a spindle, but for a big bowl, a big you know hunk of wood, a rough bowl blank where it's not balanced and whatnot, uh, that's just way too fast for a starting speed. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this down and completely strip it of this uh, wonderful blueberry paint and we're going to clean everything up. We're going to replace the bearings and the headstock on the spindle and uh, check out the motor and uh, assess all that. Uh, and what, uh, the number one thing we're going to do besides getting it all cleaned up ready to go and put back together, uh, removing all the, you know, the rust and whatnot, is we're going to change the electronics on it. I'm going to install a VFD, which is a variable frequency drive for those of you that don't know. And uh, your more modern bowl lays will have that because uh, this is a three-phase machine and a variable frequency drive will be able to adjust the speed all the way down to 150, 200 RPMs. Uh, actually, you can take it all the way down to zero, but you lose torque below 30% of the rated value of where you're at. A lot of math there. But uh, at any rate, the VFD is going to allow me to slow this motor down and this spindle down so that we can go ahead and uh, turn bowls with it and then speed up uh, as we need to. So uh, these are all the things laid out on the lathe that it came with when I bought it. I actually bought it from a closing pattern shop uh, not too far from here in Elgin, Illinois. And uh, we're going to go ahead and give this a second life. It hasn't run in 12 years. Last night for the very first time I wired it up and uh, put some grease in it, made sure that the uh, spindle had some grease and fired it up. I can't even tell you how nice it runs. So it runs good. Uh, all we got to do is clean it up and uh, give it a second chance at uh, doing what it was meant to do. So uh, this is going to be the next project and uh, I hope you stick around for the series. Obviously it's not going to be one video but uh, several of them in a row. So stick around and uh, we'll be getting busy on this pretty quick. Okay so that's going to be our next project. I know I had stated that we were going to get started on the 27 inch bandsaw but once I got the Walker Turner bandsaw running as good as it is and doing as well as it does and it has a ten and a half to ten and three quarter inch resaw capacity uh, that kind of made the 27 inch bandsaw be not so much of a priority for me the lathe is a much bigger priority because I actually have stuff that I want to get done uh, my future son-in-law and this is on a personal note my future son-in-law is going to be coming back uh, to visit my daughter here in about four or five weeks and uh, he's expressed a serious interest and wanting to turn some bowls as well. So uh, that's motivation enough for me to make that uh, the very next machine. Uh, coupled with the fact that I, well, you know, you can probably see sitting here, I've got some chisels that I recently picked up, some chisels and gouges, uh, some timber framing stuff. And uh, while the steel on these is in great shape, the handles on a few of them aren't. This particular one, this handle isn't even the right handle for it, doesn't even fit. Uh, so uh, at any rate they were cheap. I think I paid a grand total of about $20 for all of them and uh, I want to turn some new handles for them to fit my hands and uh, definitely need a lathe to be able to do that and I really don't want to do it on the big metal working lathe because oil and wood do not mix very well. So uh, we're going to keep this short and sweet and uh, I just wanted to say thanks again for uh, watching. I've really 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 been surprised and blown away by uh, the number of comments that have been underneath the three videos we've done so far. Uh, you guys have been great and I do appreciate that. Uh, another word, you get, uh, if you guys have been watching the video on the on the wall cabinet, uh, really quickly, it's almost finished. Uh, as you guys know, finishing takes time. I don't want to speed things up. Uh, you put finish on there, you got to wait a day, sand it, refinish it, stuff like that. And I'm going to admit to you that I made a small mistake on it. I cut one of the pieces of crown molding, believe it or not, a quarter inch too short. And uh, because of it, I had to make a whole new piece and uh, restain and basically start over with that. So uh, that delayed things. I wanted to have that be the, vid the completion video, but uh, instead decided to do this one. So that one will be finished very quickly. Also on the final note, uh, this week coming up, I'm going to be taking a road trip down to, uh, probably most of you already know who he is, down to Keith Rucker's shop down in Tifton, Georgia. And uh, he runs the VintageMachinery.org site and has a fantastic YouTube channel here. And uh, we're doing a scraping class for machine scraping and alignment. And I've been waiting for this class for a very long time. It's finally here. 
so I'll be gone for about a week and a half roughly so uh, once I get back I should have some great video footage for you uh, from the scraping class as well as uh, moving on with uh, videos on the lathe as well as we're going to start another woodworking project because I've got plenty of those coming up as well so please stay tuned uh, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and I do appreciate it when you hit the like button and uh, the comments have been a lot of fun for me uh, in the evening sitting down and uh, reading your guys comments and replying back to you so please keep them coming for now that's it from the vintage workshop and we'll see you real soon thanks for tuning in